Some of the labs that students most enjoy in General Biology 1 involve learning how to use biotechnology tools. And one of the most critical skills you could develop this semester is careful, accurate micropipetting. So some of you may have used micropipette before. For those of you who haven't, this is what the micropipette looks like. So it's sort of like, um, like a plunger tool that'll allow you to draw fluids out of one solution in very precise amounts. And so this pipetter here is, I'm reading the yellow dot on top, this says that this is a PR200. And what the PR200 is able to do is to both accurately and precisely measure volumes from 20 to 200 microliters. Now, a milliliter is one one thousandth of a liter. And you know what a two liter Coke bottle looks like. So imagine half of that, that's one liter. One one thousandth of that is a milliliter. Well, if you were to take one milliliter, a small amount already, and divide that into 1,000 parts, each of those would be a microliter. And so I'm able to pipette at the microliter level with this tool. But if I'm sloppy, then tiny amounts of error actually are a very large proportion of error and my reactions won't work. So the tools that we have here, I have a waste beaker. I have a box of tips that protect my micropipetter from getting dirty. And the micropipetter needs to be clean if I'm going to be able to measure small volumes both accurately and precisely. And then I have some sample dye just for test pipetting and I have another centrifuge tube that I'm going to use to pipette my sample into. And I'm looking now at the dial on my micropipetter. You're going to learn in lab how to set that to the correct volume. This one, it's the, remember, the 200 microliter pipetter. And it says 0 to 0. And that means that I'm going to be pipetting just 20 microliters, which is a small volume. But first thing I need to do is to go ahead and place a tip on the pipetter both for accurate measuring of my small volumes, but also to protect my micropipetter and keep it clean. In order to do that, you simply press the tip firmly onto the micropipetter. And so now I'm ready to go. So I'm set to 0 to 0, that's 20 microliters. Notice that when I hold the micropipetter, the little flange is pointing away from my thumb, so my opposite side. My thumb can position over the central plunger and my thumb can also position over the eject button. So right now we're going to use the central plunger. And what I'd like you to do is kind of follow along, raise your hand, well, not raise your hand, <laughs> but lift your hand and either hold a pen or just curl your hand around as though you were pipetting. So with a thumb over the central plunger, what I notice is that as I press, I hit a little stop. And in fact, that's going to be the position for drawing fluid up into my micropipetter and then I gently release. So I press down and I notice a stop and then I can draw fluid up slowly and carefully and release my thumb. In order to dispense that fluid, what I'm going to do is get my new tube and dispense into that. I press my thumb back on the plunger and I press down through the first stop all the way to the bottom. Then I need to take my tip out of my tube and slowly and carefully release my thumb. And then, when I'm finished with that sample, I press the other button, the one closer to my body, in order to eject that tip. And then I start with a fresh tip each time. So firmly press, I have a tip. And now with my other hand, or maybe my partner will help to open this tube, but with my other hand, I need to be holding the tube and I need to be holding the pipetter. So always remember, two hands, one brain. When you have two people doing fine scale work like this, you'll make errors. So in order to get accurate pipetting, two, two, <laughs> two hands, one brain. Two hands, one brain, one hand holding your tube of solution, the other holding the pipetter. So I'm going to press down to the first stop, and then I'm going to insert into my tube of solution. I don't want air bubbles in there, that's why I press down first. And then I'm going to carefully release my thumb, and I have now a tiny, tiny amount of solution in the tip of my pipetter. Now I don't want to lay it down because I'll lose my suction in my pipette tip and then I won't get an accurate volume. 
So now my partner could open for me the second tube and hand it to me. Once I have the second tube in my hand, I'm ready to dispense. So I place the pipette tip down into the tube and then slowly with my thumb press all the way down to the bottom through the first stop to the second stop of the plunger, remove the tip from the solution and then slowly release with my thumb. And then of course next step, I don't want to contaminate samples so I'm going to eject into my waste bucket. And close my tube and there we are. 20 microliters of solution. I've had a lot of practice pipetting. It's possible that I made an error and that my accuracy wasn't good, but it looks like about 20 mils. A great way for me to check that would be if my partner and myself each had pipetted 20 microliters. Oh, I think I said mils, but I meant microliters. If my partner and e I had each pipetted 20 microliters, then we could compare side by side and see if it looks like we got the right amounts. Okay, so let's think about that one more time. Maybe I have a second solution that I need to add to my sample. And maybe for that one, I need 30 mi microliters. So I'm gonna twist the top till I get to 030. So I'm gonna be pipetting 30 microliters. I hold my pipetter. I insert into a tip, press firmly. And now I have a new clean tip. Remember that I need to press down to the first stop. That's gonna discharge the air that's in the tip. And while I'm holding at that level, I insert into my sample and slowly withdraw my thumb, drawing up fluid into my pipetter. And then I'm ready to dispense. To dispense, I need to place my tip into my tube. And then I'm gonna press my thumb down all the way to the second stop, all the way down to the bottom. Pull the pipetter out of the tube and slowly release my thumb. Eject and close my tube. So remember, when you're pipetting, you need to be holding your tube and the pipetter, two hands, one brain, that way you get your most accurate measurements. And it's pretty fun to do. I think you'll enjoy learning how to use the micro pipetters in the lab. We have a pretty fun lab exercise. And then you'll be applying your new skill in our Cenorhabditis elegans, our nematode worm labs.